going to lift up verse number 26 and 27 from the passage of Scripture that was read in your hearing a little too early. I want to use as a thought for the message. I need more evidence before I believe, says Thomas. I need more evidence before I believe. Uh, verse number 26 says, a week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you and magnify your awesome and your magnificent name. Move now by your divine power. Bring this word through your vessel. Not what I would have, but what you would have. These your people to know and to understand. Allow it to penetrate our hearts. Allow it to cause us to be greater believers in your awesome and your mighty power. In Jesus' name, amen. I ask that as we go through the word that you would mute your phones, uh, that we will not get feedback. Amen? I need more evidence before I believe, says Thomas. Evidence means the availability or the body of facts or information indicating whether a believer, amen, whether a believer position is true. The study finds little evidence of overt discrimination would be one statement. Synonyms of evidence would be proof, confirmation, verification, substantiation, collaboration, and there are many more. I'm a fan of many of the CSI or NCIS TV programs 
that there are inspectors or the, 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 the law force goes forth looking for information on a crime that was committed by someone and they will go in and pull out the smallest speck and find DNA or blood or something of that nature to help uh, solve the crime. And my brothers and sisters, you and I also look forward to have good information to determine whether or not a thing that we hear, something that we are thinking is true or false or false. We need good information. Centered around the resurrection story, we find not only Thomas, but the others like Mary Magdalene, uh, who who got up early that Sunday morning to go to the graveside of Jesus to determine whether or not he had, no, nope, she didn't go to determine whether he had risen. She wanted to anoint his body, a man, somebody. But when she got there, she found out that the tomb were empty. Uh, she was told to go and tell the disciples that Jesus had risen. And they was looking for evidence, but they were so afraid that they were behind closed doors. And, and when, they, when, when they were sitting in the room looking around, can you see them now, scared to death because... They are afraid that some of the Jews that had killed Jesus, amen, was going to come and do the same for them. And all of a sudden, with their doors shut, Jesus, in his resurrected body, entered the room through the walls, and they were so afraid. And Jesus gave unto them some common word to let them know that it was him. Amen? Amen, somebody. Is there anybody in the audience that knows that Jesus can do marvelous and wonderful things and if we will just allow him, he will give us the information that we need to make good decisions on what he would have us to do. But the scripture tells us that there was one disciple that were missing from the group. Does not tell us where he was at, but Thomas was not in the room with them. And when the other disciples went forth and told Thomas, that they had seen Jesus. Glory to God. Thomas said, I, 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 I don't believe you. I, I believe you are lying to me. Uh, uh, how can he be here with us? I, I, I was peeping at, at from around the corner when he was crucified on Friday. I, I, I was watching as they beat him. I, I was watching as they whipped him. I was watching as they nailed him to the cross. I was watching when he hung his head and gave up the ghost. And now you are telling me that he is living. I won't believe it until I get enough evidence to see for myself. And how many of us have told someone that I will not believe until I see it for myself? 
And the scripture says, eight days later, the disciples were in the same room. But this time, Thomas was in the room with them. And no doubt they were sitting, talking about all that had gone on during the week. And with the doors locked, Jesus in his resurrected body. And if I would, if I had time, I would tell you that the resurrected body can go right through the walls. Glory to God. In his resurrected body, Jesus shows up again. And in his greetings, he looks at Thomas and tells Thomas, look, Thomas, put your fingers in the wound that the nail made in my hands. And Thomas, stick your hands in my side where the spear went and blood and water came, came out. Thomas, hallelujah, how did Thomas feel? I can imagine that he felt embarrassed, but also full of joy because now he has the evidence that he need to satisfy his mind that Jesus Christ did get up out of the grave on Sunday morning, that he is walking up and down the earth rim waiting to be ascend into heaven. Thomas can now believe and he cried out, my God and my Savior, I believe that you are who you say you are. Glory to God. What about you, my brothers and sisters? Do you believe that he is who he says? He was. Do you have enough evidence or proof that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God? If you don't believe it within your heart, I can tell you that he has given us enough evidence to believe that he is the Son of God. I know in my heart that Jesus Christ lives and he will live forevermore. For a long time ago, at the age of 12, in a revival service, on a Thursday evening, I know that some of you have heard it before, but on that Thursday evening, I receive all of the evidence that I needed to know for sure that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Mama had told me about him. She had told me what he had did for her and where he had bought her from and the things that he had done for the family. But on that Thursday evening, when 
when, when the preacher came down and it said, is there anyone who would like to give their life to Jesus Christ? Something on the inside of me touched me and gave me enough evidence to believe within my heart that Jesus Christ is alive and he came inside of me and saved my soul. Oh, I'm not here to tell you that I have been perfect, that I've done everything right, but I know for sure by the evidence that Jesus is alive because he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Oh, glory to God. Do you know anything about him? When I was sick and the doctors shook their heads and thought I might not make it through the night, that Jesus came into that room and brought me through. I have evidence that he is alive and well. What about you? Do you recognize that he is the son of God? Do you recognize that he is the bread of life? Do you recognize that he is the good shepherd? Do you recognize that he is the resurrection and the life? My brothers and sisters, he gave Thomas, the disciples, and those of us that believe in him, evidence that he is the Son of God. And one glad morning, when this life is over, he will come back for us. Hallelujah. And then when the time comes for this world to be no more, he will come back in the great resurrection and receive us unto his own. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you.